Presbyterian Church. On, um, in Richmond, and it's called I Love the Lord. And all of us love the Lord. And I sung with, I sung a cappella. So bear with me this morning. And this song is a prayer. You all have heard it before. Just think about how much you love the Lord. How much He makes you feel good on the inside. And say, I love you. See that ye be not troubled. For all these 
these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse, diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall hate be hated by of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. That's the reading of God's word. God has a word today. He has a word for each and every one of us. In my experience, it is easy to win a believer who accepts Jesus Christ already. But to do, but what would you do to an unbeliever who is agnostic, a pantheist, an atheist? a Wiccan, a pagan, and the list goes on. How do you win them to Christ? How do you defend Christ? And how do you win those who call themselves followers of Christ who refuse to show up to worship and studies? You see, many of them would argue or defend their point of view with such zeal to why they don't believe in Christ. And they're arguing that there is no such thing as God. Everything happens by chance. There is a logical explanation for the formation of the earth and the universe. That's what they say. I don't have, and others may say, I don't just don't have the time. Or oh, I'll be there, Pastor, and never show up. I have had one gentleman challenge me by asking me, convince me to be a Christian. I realized this man wasn't serious about becoming given salvation. I can't convince you to do anything. You have to make a decision in your life, and this is as I was sharing with him to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In order for you to be a Christian, you have to confess, confess Christ as your Lord. I can't make you do anything. You have to do, make that decision within yourself, as we have done. You know, trying to embarrass me in front of all his friends, that, that's the situation. And that's how most people do us. You know, get around your friends, and then you talk about the love of Jesus Christ and then come up with something to embarrass you or water down your faith. But what I like to do sometimes, I like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, so I take them away from their friends so they don't have any ammunition or excuses. But when you take someone by themselves or in conversation, let me talk to you for a minute. You take them away from their group, they lose their ammunition. They lose their, their pride and their joking for their boys or gals. And that's when you test it down and talk about the real people, and that's Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you're at home or out of town or been in your Christian, Christian community, you know, pretty much, I believe in Petersburg, we got a great assembly of people who believe in Christ. However, in Petersburg, there's also a great assembly of people who have yet to receive Christ. Amen. You know, 
And I, and, and I try, my wife and I like to go out and talk to people and we reach out to them everywhere we go. Being good for being in disciples. Um, this Friday we spoke with some folks and shared about West Minister's Presbyterian and talked about the Lord. And there are people out there looking for a church home. Believe it or not, there are people looking for a home that is stable, that will teach the word, word on word, verse on verse. That will want to be loved. That's one to be able to reach and talk to somebody instead of being just another number among thousands who can't be reached. There's people starving for that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that's what I believe this church has. One of the greatest assets this church has is love. It's love. You don't have to have a million dollar facility. You don't have to have great, a great uh, orator or a, a television program. But the biggest thing you have is love. That what does the draw. Why? Because you've got the love of Jesus Christ inside of you. And when you have the love of Jesus Christ inside of you, people will come. So don't worry about the numbers. God does the draw. All you have to do is just share what you come to understand. Amen. But you know, when dealing with people, like folks who will say, we don't believe in God and just try to beat you down at work, like the atheists, the pagans, you know, it's sad things when these kind of things draw young people. What I'm talking about, you got young people who are not in the church family drawn to these pagans, these abominations. Why? Because it's appealing to them. Then it is the opposite of what God has said for us to hear. To get through the Christ. And some reason or another, they were either not taught or they were not loved. And they'll go to a place where they feel that they have received love. We got a job on our hands. Even many of the people in our society don't have a problem with abortion, homosexuality, and other immoral immoralities within our society. I, I found there's people who are raised, I found this young man, a few people, this young man in particular, who was raised in the church but turned his life away from the church. And somehow down, you know, down the road, God, as I was asking the question, somehow he felt as if he was kicked out of the church, or there's somebody who said something to him or her that turned them away from God. We gotta be careful what we do. People are watching, people are listening, what we say plays a makes a big impact to a lot of people. Even today. As God showed me through his word, and after reading the, 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 some of the hymns and some of the songs of praise, I noticed a lot of in, in years, this is, I've been understanding God's word, that a lot of people have forgotten their first love. In this country, years ago, it was used to be 90% Christianity. 90% of people, according to a lot of the statistics I have pulled from the internet. But I tend to find that kind of hard to believe now in our situation as we continue to, our people continue to accept the things that are not of God. We got the highest divorce rate in the, in the world. We got marriages being redefined by homosexuals. They're taking over our schools. Prayer has been taken out. And now the devil's trying to take over the church. And that bothers me, saints of God. You see, when you take God out of anything, Satan moves in. And that time, that's when you got to make a decision when you're going to be about God's business or be about the world's business. You can call yourself a Christian all day long. It's popular title. But your walk's going to be as far from God when you don't stand on God's word. Amen. Yes. 
you know, it, it bothers me when I go to work every day when a child constantly tells me I got I can't talk about Jesus at work. Or I can't say it in Jesus' name in a prayer. It bothers me, America. It bothers me, brother sister. When I serve, I'm serving your country, my country. When I go to public places where Jesus is being kicked out, and yet the mega churches, the established churches, don't say a word in protest. Now let go to let, let's say, for example, let's, let's flip the script for a second. Let's say we're Muslims. Let's say this is a mosque. And somebody say, women can't wear burqas anymore. Our government say, well, we can't say Allah Akbar anymore. Meaning God is great. There'll be such an outcry that this nation will never see. If you don't believe me, you only have to do turn the TV on and see the world as it is. Those Muslims really believe in what they're doing. They're even willing to take you and me out just to prove it. But when somebody comes and says they're going to bring homosexuality on the pulpit and we do absolutely nothing, something's wrong. And when we play in church, oh, we're going to be about the of business. Are we going to share the gospel, the truth, the good news, the love of Jesus Christ? Are we going to sit on a pew and be quiet? This is 2011, and we can't be quiet no more. We got a whole community around us. The harvest is ready. Are you going to be one of the labor, a few laborers? Who's going to harvest? Are you going to be just a, those who are going to just watch? We got to defend our faith. We got to stand on God's word. We got to speak boldly about Jesus Christ. We got to be willing to sacrifice our lifestyle, our comfort zone for Jesus Christ. If your job tells you you cannot be a Christian today, if your boss walk up to you and say, no more talks about Christianity, are you going to still talk about Jesus or are you going to be quiet? So you can get a paycheck and pay your mortgage, pay your bills and so forth. If so, you have lost, you have missed them all. We spend too much time on our comfort zone, brothers and sisters. I'm not just talking about us here, but I'm talking about as a whole. We have lost the mark when we spend too much time worrying about our, when we're going to get food tomorrow. Our savings account. We don't have to put up with that kind of stuff. Amen. I agree. You know, as I, look, as I look, God's word just continue to work on me. I see more people have more voices in the church than we do. I see a Muslim can stand up and everybody will hear them. But when I stand up, you can't say anything. You know that, right? You can't, you can't do this and you can't do that. But the Muslims get all the media attention. The gays get all the media attention. There's some protests, there's some Christians protesting, but the media will not cover it. They won't. Unless a mass of people stand up and say no. If you've got a friend who's running for office, make sure they are Christians. Make sure they stand on God's truth and make sure they stand about what's the welfare of the people. If you don't, it's just going to be another cycle. We've got to make a decision whether we're going to stand, defend our faith, or let it go. You heard the scripture that there's going to be false prophets among us? There are. That people with persecution is going to be upon us? There has already begun and has continued for generations. You don't have to have someone cut off your head to know there's persecution. You don't have to have someone lock you up or lock me up to know there's persecution. All they have to do is change laws. Slowly but surely. We change the Constitution. That's called amendments. Know your constitution. Know your civil rights. Speak boldly about Christ in everything you do. 
Don't be like so many of us allow the devil to come into the house of God. They already took over the military. It used to be a time you have on the chapel, there was on top of the chapel steeple, there was a cross standing on top of it. Am I right? Yes. There was to be a cross. And then one day I was riding through Fort Lee, the cross is gone. Now I'm not that much younger, I'm not that old. But I know there was a cross on top of it. Now the cross is gone. Why? Well, we gotta have diversity. Jesus, we gotta have diversity. Now, some of y'all probably want to talk about diversity. Y'all study diversification and all that. But sometimes you gotta just step. Sometimes some diversity is not good for us. Some diversities are not acceptable. I believe in life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But pursuit of happiness comes from the word of truth. Liberty comes from the word of truth. Not for just anything else. I'm not prejudiced. Doesn't matter if you green, black, yellow, white, Caucasian, Hispanic, it doesn't make no difference to me. Do you love the Lord? That's all I care about. That's all I care about is your soul. Amen. I don't care what language you speak, we'll get an interpreter for you. So you can learn and hear the word of God. But I'm not going to stand here and compromise, and you shouldn't compromise, stand and compromise, and let someone dictate to you your Christianity. We got to defend and stand up and defend our faith in court, in public, and on TV. Defend your faith. I see mega churches after mega churches standing and die standing on the pulpit, which is called basically means the Tower of Wood. In the old, if you look at Genesis, we're concerned more about the 501c, and they want just so they want to offend other religions, saving the church finances and losing souls. We are in the business of saving souls, not giving them away. We are not in the business of turning the church into a corporation, are we? People say the church is like a business now. No, you got some things you got to have accounting for. You got some things you got to keep the books for. But we are not a business corporation where we're selling souls. Selling souls, not the product. Salvation is a product, but it's free. It was given to us freely. We shall give it to whosoever will let him come for free. All right. Ain't got nothing to do with look at your neighbor and how much money you got. If you try to save your life, you lose your soul. Amen. I ain't gonna hold you too long. We say Christ is Lord when we're happy and everything's going good. But ain't no doubt about it, but when we can say, say, can we still say Christ is Lord when things go wrong? When you lose your job, when you lose your house, can you still say Christ is Lord? When you're homeless, don't know when your next meal is going to come, can you still say Christ is Lord? Hmm. So I remember reading this book called of Christianity um, once upon a time when I was a student by Joseph L. Gonzalez. And he said in his book, and I quote, in this book he gave me a detailed explanation of only early churches that converted pagans to follow Christ, even if it meant death by the Roman authorities. You know, those Romans were tough. We talked about that in Bible study in Sunday school about Jesus' time, that the Romans were in charge. And the Romans have a way of dealing with people who goes against their will. Just like in the Old Testament, Pharaoh was the was like a god. Same thing with the emperor of Rome. If you study ancient history, they consider the emperor of God. Anything, if you worship anything but the emperor, then you are in trouble. And many Christians pay for it by the thousands. But the good news is, thousands of pagans and gods, which were they called back in the days, were baptized and converted 
and follow Jesus Christ. They didn't have GPS. They didn't have television set. They didn't have radios. All they had was a word of mouth. And they were effective. We got all this technology. We still can't hardly get people in here. Oh, have mercy. But this is basically what he said on page 14, by me read. Thus Christianity often reached a new region, not through works of missionary work or preaching, but rather through traveling traders, slaves, and others. That's how I worked that out. It's through witnessing of the goodness of Christ Jesus. You see, the early church stood for something. We got to stand for something. We got to give word of mouth, not word of mouth marketing, but word of mouth witnessing to one soul at a time. Even in an empire of thousands of believers were being persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. By a thousand, they continue to spread the good news of Christ. Who did it? The common people. Just like you and me. Amen. And amongst others. Many of them were willing to face martyrdom. And that means give up their life freely, not blow themselves up. As a form of showing their true commitment to Jesus. I believe we should have the same zeal in, as the early Christians had faith during their time. Our government and the ACLUs are persecuting Christians today by the millions. Well, how do they do it? Well, they tell you right now, you can take out, take that cross off of memorials, take that cross out of the court, take the Ten Commandments out of the court system, watch what you're saying, you can't pray in a ball game. You can't even lead a prayer in a ball game. Well, God bless it. Some of you school teachers know what I'm talking about. Military, you got to be careful what you say. I'm in the military. I'm not going to do it. I'm speaking like God would want me to speak. In season, out of season. They see the video every day. And I'm still waiting for them to arrest me. I'm not afraid. And neither should you. We should, you should not be afraid. Amen. They're passing laws and making it almost illegal to profess Christ. We got to keep our eyes open and see what's going on. But we got to study the word of truth. And I pray that many of you will continue to come to Bible study in Sunday school and stand on the word of God. I believe also everyone should have the opportunity to, to witness about the love of Jesus Christ and how it affects your life. Share your testimonies. Because there's somebody out there going through what you have gone through. Share the truth. Many of, them, many of those who don't believe will try you. Let me tell you something. I have hung around many Muslims. And they know this Bible just as well as I do. Know the word of truth for yourself. So when you talk to somebody, they're going to try to throw you off, stand on the word of truth, what you come to understand. I just take you to the Quran. I said, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait a minute, brother. But your Quran said this. So why are you, you a Christian now? Do you accept Jesus Christ? Like, no, 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 no. Everyone said, well, how, you got the word in you? Why don't you can't give life, give your life to Christ? You know what the word says. The Quran says the matter. I know that Quran too, but I got a copy. You got to know, you got to know in order to talk to them. If you come to them anyway, they got something for you. Amen? Amen. We got to sing, you know, we got to sing according to God's will. We got to stand according to God's will. We'll sing a song. You can't make me doubt him every day. You can't make me doubt him. All right. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. You can't make me doubt him. You can't.